Aha, hello. So, I've had a few minutes to um, to pivot from my original plan, and um, I'll just what I'll do is just explain this because uh, you know I know that Instagram does that thing of the actor is live online now. Hi Lou, hello. <laughs> Welcome over to this <laughs> new version of the training. Oh, the joys of technology. So, um, uh, <laughs> it was an accident that this ended up being, you know, that Valentine's Day happened to be a Sunday and this Sunday happened to be the one that I chose to do codependency. It was genuinely a complete accident. So it is either the most appropriate or the most inappropriate training <laughs> since codependency is all about relationship. And, you know me, I, I work with families. Oh, that's better. I work with families, so I work one-to-one -one with the parents, and I also work with leadership training. And in both areas, frankly, you can't move forward as a leader in your family without some knowledge of codependency. And you also can't really move forward in your work if you want to elevate into you know the realms of leadership, whether that's emerging into middle leadership or going from middle leadership leadership, which is I'm thinking of schools because I work mostly with schools right now that you know that's head of department, that's head of subject, it's head of year, you know going up into senior leadership, codependency is the key to finding your authentic self, or should I say dealing with codependency and awareness of it. And, and it's also the key to consistency. Because if you are codependent, or if you are exhibiting codependent behavior and relationship patterns, you are not able to show up in the same way for every decision that you make. And that is why this is so important. So um, I've just got some of my notes. I just want, I wanted to ask some questions of, I know not so many people are here because you know I advertise it on Facebook and things, but have you ever heard, even if you're watching this on the replay, just have a, I think, and I know I always recommend having a journal. There's my one, comes with me everywhere. It's looking quite dog-eared now, and obviously you can see the boys have had a go at it. Um, yeah, have you heard of it before? Have you ever heard of codependency? And if you have, does it mean anything? Maybe you heard about it in a movie, maybe you've seen it or listened to it on a podcast or somebody's made this throwaway comment like, oh yeah, 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 no, she's so codependent. And what does that mean? So uh, I'll just give you a second if you would put that in the comments, that'd be awesome. Or, you know, Write it in your journal and just have a think. You don't need to know about it. That's what this is for. So I'm going to jump in with what is it? Codependency. People argue about it, as always, with these psychological classifications. It is at root. No matter what people say and what directions they take it and how far. Oh, yep, I researched it a little after I heard about it, but didn't connect with what I read, so I wanted to watch a video. Yay, brilliant. <laughs> I'm reading a book right now. Um, I've, I've got the, the sample on Kindle, and I'm buying the actual book after the Tet holidays, and the bookshops are open tomorrow, called Codependency No More. So I will doubtless do more deep dives into this. Um, essentially... It is a maladaptive pattern of behaviour. Everybody agrees with that. So maladaptive means it doesn't serve you. That's all it means. In, so a, an adaptive way of expressing yourself is to write it down, to talk to people, to you know go maybe have a little cry when you feel full of emotions. This is adaptive. A maladaptive thing is something that no longer share, no longer serves you. Like. The screaming and shouting and thinking of the the children oh, well, and <laughs> some grown ups you know the 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 holding it all in and then this is it is not serving us so it is maladaptive and for me the takeaway from this is that no matter what source i've read and uh, anyone who knows me will know i am quite the geek and i own it 
and I love this about myself. So I've read a lot about it, but everybody agrees that it is a pattern of behavior. What does that mean? It means you can change it, but it's great news. You can become aware of it, you can notice it, you can take steps to change it. So it, it happens within relationships and interestingly, not all relationships. Some people are, have, they exhibit codependent traits across all relationships and some people some people have it only in their romantic relationships some people have it only with in relation to their mother um, I, I talk that this isn't a codependency thing but I talk <laughs> quite a lot about how I was always labeled as a kid as the clumsy one I'm not clumsy I actually needed glasses as a kid hmm. um, and you know when I got them I stopped bumping into things shocker but even now, when I go home, people will recognise this, I'm sure. Whenever I go home, as in to my mom's, like for Christmas, I'll be there like one hour and I've broken a glass. It's unbelievable. And my husband finds it hilarious. And he's like, you know, you'll go for an entire calendar year without breaking something. And you go home to your mom's house. You know, you visit your mom for Christmas. Like, I'm 36 now. I will still break a glass or a mug. And, and it's me falling back into that, oh, I'm the clumsy one business. And I think a lot of people, you know, they go home and I say home as in back to the family home, even as adults, and they slip straight back into being the baby sister, being the older brother, whatever that dynamic is, or being in competition with sibling or, you know, rolling eyes at your dad, even though your dad is 70 and you are 40 now. The, these are ways where we have this pattern of behavior. So what does it look like? Some of this might be awkward. <laughs> it's sad, I mean, it still is for me. It looks like it's basically sacrificing yourself and your needs, be they psychological or remote, like your spiritual needs. Sometimes it's your physical needs or your emotional needs for somebody else that age-old thing this is why it's so important when we're working with parents you know that oh no I didn't want to anyway or oh I can never fit a workout in I, j I just can't you know th they need me too much or or you know you know wanting food from the family table and not taking it it can turn into it, it, it can become the martyrdom complex you know like oh no I, you know I haven't had a shower for three days this is codependency because if we're really honest you probably could have had a shower within that three days and again I have done this when my babies were small and they they still are it's very easy to fall into this pattern of what I do is dependent on you and your needs so you're putting yourself almost well it is subjugating your needs for another another person, another group, like your children or your family or your husband or wife or, or within work, it could be you know, subjugating what you need, so not actually speaking up for yourself. It can also uh, be shown as, well, it's a sign of low self-esteem. I think that's quite clear, as in not being able to advocate for yourself. But it can also show up as, uh, as controlling and that's controlling outcomes, as in not being willing to step into a task or a meeting or a role or a presentation without knowing every single potential in and out of it. And this is where you know, it gives rise to anxiety. This is how we know it is maladaptive because it's not serving you. It's causing more harm to you than being, you know, we do need to be prepared, certainly at work, certainly when we're at work and there are children's lives at stake, say in, in the NHS or, well, health, this is international now, isn't it? So, you know, any health service or if you're working in schools, like the leaders that I work with, you can't turn up with no preparation and that actually would be stressful. But where it tips into the codependent side is where you need to know every single out that could potentially happen in a given scenario and that extrapolates to 
everything that they could say, everything that I could say. And hopefully you can see that, that that's not serving you. It is maladaptive. Um, also controlling yourself, creating the timetables and not the structured timetables that are adaptive, that support us with managing our time, but the ones where I'm going to eat this and this and this, I'm going to do this and this and this at this time and only this time. It's controlling and it's controlling out of a, a fear of being out of control. And where does that come from? The not knowing our authentic selves, not knowing what we want and not being able to, even if we do know what we want, not being able to acknowledge what we want and to go for it and to advocate for ourselves. This is where the self-esteem comes in. So you, I imagine you're seeing codependency is so key because all of these different things feed into it. It's an incredibly mind-blowing topic, which is why we all need to be aware of it. So, oh yes, and the other way is in fixing. Fixing people. Fixing subjects. Fixing, fixing others. In a way of, if I fix you, it will reflect better on me. So you are really angry, I must fix you. You have these problems, I can diagnose your problems. And I can fix you. And through fixing you, I become a happier person. I become a better person because you are fixed. Hi, Lou. <laughs> and this, it really, it is a way of, contr it's, it's another way of controlling. You know, if I fix you, I will be happier because what you do reflects on me because my sense of self is dependent upon what you do and how you feel. Therefore, I must fix you. And also, isn't that a neat way to not have to look at ourselves? Because it's scary. Because when we exhibit codependent behaviours, it's a sign that we don't know our authentic selves. And getting to know our authentic selves is hard work. And it is quite scary if, if we haven't done it for a long time. Yeah, I think, I think, Lou, a lot of people are going to be going, oh my goodness, this does make sense. I have seen it and, you know, I don't have it in this sphere, but I do. Oh, actually, I really, really see that, which is why I think Valentine's Day is, like I said, the most appropriate or least appropriate because it does show up a lot in romantic relationships where one partner feels that they can't do something because they're always worrying about the other one and they don't advocate for themselves and also it you know happens within families and it happens within leadership and the leaders who exhibit codependent behavior patterns are the ones who find it difficult to make clear decisions because they're so worried not about the data in front of them and then the decision that makes the most sense for their organisation, for the children that they support or for, you know, their team, they are worried about how everybody else is going to react to them. So they are dependent on what other people think of them. It's hard. So, um, yeah, the, I've, I've split this into this training into different parts. So one other thing is, where does it come from? Because that's what we need to know. We need to know what it is, which we've, kind of, we've just done. And, you know, that was like 12 minutes not exhaustive <laughs> but it's useful and it's an eye-opener so you know where it comes from and what we could do about it as I said at the start this is a behavior pattern that we learn well that we fall into through you know, low self-esteem through modeling it and having seen it in our own families and or through well, poor leaders modelling it for us at work within the organisation, or all of the above, and we, you know, we fall into it, and then we reinforce it through our behaviour, and our self esteem gets lower and lower, and here we go into this pattern. So good news is we can change it, and that's where we end. On a happy note. <laughs> so, where did it come from? Fear. Plain and simple. Now, it's interesting because anyone who watches my videos, certainly I know some people who are watching this or who will be watching this through the Facebook group are people who work with me one-to-one -one already. I talk about this all the time. It's fear. And it is when fear takes over 
And if you think of it as a seesaw of like love and fear, it's when fear wins. Because we, for example, we love our children and we have so many fears for them. You know, will they get a good job? Will they, will they be able to, you know, choose the right GCSEs? And then will they be able to shine in those exams with what they're doing right now? And then if they don't, will they get a good job? We, you know, we worry about them constantly. And sometimes that fear clouds our love. This is why the six-week program that my signature six week program deactivate triggers activate love is named that because our triggers which almost all come from fear they stop our love from showing because what the children feel is control and this is the same in industry what our team our workers our children in our year group that we're in charge of they feel control do your homework, eat your greens, you must do this exercise, get off the screens. Why? Because we love you and I want you to not be addicted to screens. I love you and I want you to be fit and healthy. I love you and I want you to do well at, at school, at college, at university. I love you. But what we are doing is we are behaving from a codependent pattern and we're controlling them for their own good. And it's from fear and love. So uh, it also comes from, you know, when we are controlling people as they move away from us, thinking that this is the Valentine's Day business, that, you know, the partner who wants to go away, I know we can't do that right now, but, you know, the partner who wants to go away with her friends for the weekend and that triggering anxiety and, no, 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 you can't go, can't go whether it is you know said out loud or acted on out loud or whether you have a big bust up fight over it no you can't do that you can't pull away from me you can't pull away from me this is controlling this is a codependent pattern where you are controlling somebody else because of your fear of abandonment this is this type of thing that comes from homes where you didn't feel secure this is why on my six week program, we go back and we look at our formative childhood experiences. If we think of our authentic self, we have these layers of, of conditioning in response and some perfectly sensible. You know, you pull the cat's tail, you learn not to do it. This is sensible. We are human beings. We are social animals. We learn through observing other people's responses to us and then modifying our behaviour. Some of this is healthy. When you're flip-flopping constantly and changing your personality and you have lost who you are, actually going to pause there because a lot of people ring me for that or you know, get in contact and they say, I've just lost who I am. I'm just a person who fulfills everybody's needs around me and I don't know who I am anymore and I am deeply unhappy. This is where it comes from. It comes from if I don't do the thing that you want me to do or if I don't do the things that I perceive you want me to do, think of all the energy that we're wasting on this. If I don't do the things that I perceive you need and want me to do in order for you to love me, you won't stay near me and I can't cope with that because I have triggers in my childhood in my formative years, you know, that blueprint for how we behave that our subconscious uses to base all of our adult interactions from, it's formed around the age of seven. So if you have experienced abandonment or neglect in your early years, the chances are that when you really sit and think about, and you might need to watch this video two or three times because it is a huge chunk of subject <laughs> it's huge but if you if you have this in your past the chances are it is where these codependent behavior patterns are coming from so yes the uh so that's separation anxiety it's fear of abandonment this is where people you know our husband doesn't text us at work and i know because i've fallen into this when i was extremely needy after we had you know three babies three years and i was lonely and i've got to be honest in retrospect, I know that it was triggering my childhood wounds. 
and I was like, can you, I, I just, I was texting him all the time, and he was trying to work, and I had to catch myself, I didn't know the name for it, but I had to catch myself and go, this isn't about him, this is about me, and I had to do some painful healing around that, and guess what, we had a much stronger relationship, and I was much happier for it, so sometimes, you know, it's looking the scary thing in the face and going, yeah, I'm, I'm not behaving in, in an adaptive manner. I have needs to meet here and I need to do them in a different way that isn't controlling somebody. Um, the, the not having boundaries, by which I mean not being able to say, this is too much for me right now, I, I need to stop, or, you know, I can't, I can't bake all of the cakes in the school cake sale. I, I just can't because I have too much on. And if you don't have boundaries and you don't have a strong sense of your authentic self and understanding of your own needs, this is when we take on too many things. This is when we overload ourselves and then we suffer psychologically because of it. And if we are unable to work out what our needs are, and we are, even if we are able to work them out, unable to act on those needs, we need to think, does that stem from, quite often it does, not having your needs met in your early years, this having to do everything on your own, this being an island unto yourself, and this not being able to say no, it, it comes from never having our needs met as a child. I mean, I can't say that definitely because everybody has their own situations, but this is, this is where I would urge you to go away and think. And, and I mean like go away for half an hour to an hour walk on your own with maybe some quiet music and just think, okay, what's happening right now? What could it be? And it might be painful to face. This is the cost of growth. Is the, the short term wince of, of pain <laughs> that we need to go through. You know, the, a very good friend of mine, Steph Healed, she... She always says, the gold is in the goo. We've got to go through the goo to come out the other side. <laughs> Otherwise, we never metamorphose. Um, so yes, from our dependent states, it comes from when we, as small people, I alluded to this before, we were, you know, when you, when you come out, however you emerge into the world, we're dependent, obviously. We're dependent on the people around us for food, comfort, warmth, everything a baby can't do it a two-year-old can't do it you know a four-year-old might be able to pour themselves a drink but they can't look after themselves all of this comes from the people around us and this is where we learn and this is where i'm not going to go into it because that's a completely different video this is where reparenting is so important because if our parents were not emotionally mature and this is no blame, there's no blame here. If our parents weren't able to meet our needs when we were children because they had stuff going on, we, as young children, come to all kinds of conclusions about, I'm not worthy, I'm not loved. And actually, it's not true. It's, it's not true, you are worthy of love. But when you were a young, young child, perhaps your family weren't able to show it for so many reasons but we create this blueprint for how we feel about ourselves and how we act based on naught to seven i'm just gonna have a quick drink because <laughs> i need to keep drinking while i'm talking so I'm going to stop there. There is much more, but I, I don't want to, you know, bombard you with too much information. So what is it doing? This codependent, maladaptive pattern of behaviour and relating to other people. What is it doing? Essentially, it is stopping you from being you. That's it. It is stopping you from 
acknowledging your authentic self, I do this so often, from, you know, your authentic self, this, this jewel, this nugget of gold, which is you, it is stopping you from finding it because you have all of these, oh, but what if, oh, but what if, oh, what if they think of me like this? Oh, what if my partner pulls away? Oh, oh, what if my children hate me because I went for a sleep on the, you know, in the afternoon and they want to play with me and they, they don't like it when I go out with my friend? What if, when I do yoga, it upsets everybody else. Oh, I can't do yoga then. You know, we neglect ourselves because we're worried about either what other people will think of as social acceptance or how well other people will cope without us, which is, you know, our worries about other people and how they're affected and not trusting, you know, our partner or our teammates to have jobs delegated to them. So not knowing your authentic self and not understanding what your authentic self needs in order to be happy and well-adjusted, it's stopping you, these codependent patterns, they are stopping you from looking after yourself so that you can be who you are meant here, who you are meant to be. It's, it's making fear the driver of your actions and not love. So this is quite a big thing. This is why, you know, it might sound dull as dishwater, codependency, you know, it's not an amazingly sexy term, but this is why it is so key, because how different would the world be if we adults, particularly we family leaders, particularly we school leaders and we institution leaders, if we were able and free to walk around as our authentic selves acting from love and stability and love for ourselves and security, how different would that be compared to a whole load of walking wounded adults reacting from a place of fear? world would be completely different. That's why I do what I do. It also makes you unable to look into yourself because it's scary and because you're caught in this. I mean, codependency isn't. Um, Dr. Nicole Le, uh, Le Perra, I can't say ours. <laughs> she, um, she's the holistic psychologist and she talks about codependency and she makes the very, very good point that this isn't when we, you know, our kid is sick. So we put our need to go to yoga on the back burner because, you know, our kid needs to be looked after. You know, this is normal. This is part of society. This isn't, I think she used the example of, this isn't that time when my sister is having a tough time. So I answered the phone at, you know, four in the morning and I was texting a lot you know, that's a short period of time. This is a habitual way of co-opting your authentic self for other people and ignoring your own needs for the sake of other people. So when we are looking at other people and we are trying to fix other people and we are trying to control other people and we are trying to control the world around us, we're looking outwards and we're not growing. And this behavior pattern is stopping us from looking into ourselves, which means we are not growing, we're not becoming better, we're not becoming happier. We are not supporting and enabling ourselves because we're too busy controlling everything around us out of fear. And uh, <laughs> I'm laughing at my note. I just put, you're feeling crap. It's not nice. Being at the whim of everybody else I, I just pause there because somebody said that exact thing to me and I've just, I've just put two things together. That one of the, the feedback from my program, somebody said, I no longer feel at the whim of everybody else in my family. Being at the whim of other people, being powerless to assert yourself because you don't know how and you don't even know what that means because you don't know what yourself, your authentic self is. Horrible. You feel lost, you feel lonely, you feel confused, you feel disempowered. Your locus of control, um, I'm a mathematician, so think of a compass with a circle around it. Your locus of control is not within you anymore, it's outside of you because this 
this maladaptive behaviour pattern of codependency puts the control outside of you and the control for your life is is in other people's hands and their behaviour. Don't worry because I am going to tell you in a sec how you can take it back and bring the locus of control inside your own heart. It's also exhausting because we're spending all this energy thinking about all the different outcomes, you know, oh, but what if this happens and this could happen and this could happen. You know, when I talked about at the start, it shows up by being unable to move forward because you have to know everything. You have to know all the different outs so you can always control what happens. And it means that you're never able to lean into the trust that things will be okay. Or the faith that you will, you know, whatever you come up against, you will solve it, you will get over it, and you will work together with the people that you love and respect to be okay. It's exhausting. Anxiety is exhausting. Codependency is exhausting. Second guessing everyone is exhausting. Never having any time for yourself because you don't know how to get time for yourself. It's exhausting and frankly, when you're able to break these patterns, which is a slow process over a long time, often with a mentor or support, certainly at the very, very least with a good friend or a loved one, you just have so much more energy. And you have the energy, hi there, and then you have the energy to actually do things like the yoga or cooking fresh food or going out for a walk with your family Or, you know, dealing with what, you know, some people, when you first put your boundaries in place, might not respond brilliantly to it. You know, they might be a bit suspicious. And, but you have the energy now that you're not wasting it on all these anxious emotions and this controlling of everything around you because you're breaking the pattern of codependency. You have this energy to to sit and explain, no, this is just about me taking time for myself because it makes me happier and I have more in the tank for you later and people respond brilliantly to it so third thing how to break the pattern this is what we all want to know now so we know what it is we know kind of where it's come from we know what is it doing what are the effects of codependent behavior patterns on your life and your relationships right now Uh, I say this a lot. The answer is so simple. Simple is not easy. (laughs) So quite often, you know, yeah, simple isn't easy. But good news, you have time. All we have, all we have truly is time. And we can choose how we spend it. So awareness is our first method for breaking codependent maladaptive patterns of relating to others what does that mean it means that when you notice with no judgment just notice when you're say you're hungry and you're not taking the time to eat because there's so much going on around you and you feel like you're pulled like oh I have to put I have to pack the change bag oh no no I have to do the pack lunch for the kids oh my husband is doing this oh my my partner is over there oh 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 I have to do that that thing for work and you're becoming overwhelmed because you're being pulled in all these different directions this is where all you need to do is just pause and go ah I'm not looking after myself Ah, I am co-opting my need for sleep or food or peace and quiet. You deserve peace and quiet. Or exercise and if you want to go for a walk or if... Here's my pattern that I will share with you. I have to do physio. So after my babies were born, my abs just just, just crumbled. And they, they split apart, have diastasis, recti. And I I need to do 10 minutes a day of physio. How many days I have not taken 10 minutes for myself in order to do that, even though I know it heals my body and it makes me able to pick my son up. It makes me able to run about. And I consistently used to say as the martyr, oh, I don't have time to do that. Oh, I don't have to, everybody needs me. And do you know what? It wasn't true, not true. 
so yeah if you're doing something like that just catch yourself and go oh hang on a minute is this true that I don't have 10 minutes to do the physio which is an investment in myself is it true that I don't have time to eat two slices of toast really it's not this is codependency okay that's all you need to do I know it sounds so simple I know it sounds so simple and it's not (laughs) it's an ongoing it's an ongoing quest because once you know it then you can make the logical next step of okay so I am co-opting my own needs in this scenario or you know I'm in a meeting and I don't dare say what I need to say because I know that that person in that corner is going to be really pissed off with that decision I make and then you have that choice where you go, okay, I need to be true to my authentic self here. I'm going to go eat some toast. Or I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the thing that I need to say to move my department forward. And I am going to just be brave and say, okay, come and meet me in my office if you want to talk about it afterwards. Ta-da! You've become a better leader. You've become a happier person within yourself. You have become a better leader within your family because the mom who hasn't eaten or the dad who hasn't done his physio or exercises or whatever, they are the parents who end up building up like a volcano and shouting. So you are doing the best by looking after yourself. Um, The other thing for breaking the cycle so how to break the pattern in us is basically awareness setting aside time for ourselves as human beings and then with that awareness making our choice and being brave if you want to break the cycle so if you know full well that it came from your mother's martyrdom complex because she for whatever reasons that she is completely entitled to from her childhood, her past, her relationships at the time when you were in your formative years, if you know it came from there, or if you know it came from your relationship with your siblings when you were young, you have the chance, and I argue the responsibility, to break the cycle. How you do that, you make sure that your children, your wife, your husband, your wider family, your friends, you make sure that they know that they are not responsible for your feelings because you are are teaching them that how you feel is separate to how they feel because that's okay. Anyone who has grown up in those houses where you had a strong matriarch or a strong patriarch in a not necessarily positive way, you know, who, who would feel these big shouty emotions and the whole family would be like... Or, or they would exhibit certain behaviours like, you know, they'd have a twitch or, a, or they'd go, you know, something and the whole family would go, OK, we stop fighting now. This is, code of, this is the roots of codependency because what we learn is, oh, oh dad is feeling something bad. I need to change my behaviour. This is codependency. At that age, if you lived in that scenario, it is sensible and it is safe. And you are, as an adult, able to say, thank you, little me, for keeping myself safe. Thank you, little me, for learning these behaviour awareness patterns and being able to read other people. It has served me extremely well in my professional life, in my relationship. I'm going to move forward now without that because I am not controlled by other people's emotions and we as adults, parents, teachers, mentors, youth offending supporters, whatever, we have a responsibility to make sure that our children grow up knowing and our teens grow up knowing they are not responsible for other people's feelings and we simply do that by saying it. For example, uh, you're very, very tired and your kids are, you know, on at you. Oh, at this, oh, at this, oh, at this, blah, 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 blah. You know, they're fighting, you know, whatever. You know these scenarios. And then eventually go and you shout. 
And here is where how to apologize, which is another video. I'll make that note. Here is where how to apologize is so useful because what you say is, Mummy got really overwhelmed right there. I'm sorry that I shouted, it wasn't appropriate. I need you to know that Mummy's feelings are Mummy's responsibility and Mummy is going to go and have a cup of tea now and, and calm myself down. Mummy is going to go and listen to a meditation now. I mean, I do that. My kids are six, four and two. And if I'm having a rough day and I'm tired or, um, you know, I'm grumpy at something else, then I'm, take, I'm, I'm taking it out on them because I'm a human. Of course I do that sometimes. And I catch myself and I will say, mummy's going to go and listen to a five minute meditation. And I go do it. And they actually allow me the space to do it because they've learned mummy's regulating her emotions now. So we are modeling it. So we're showing awareness of what happened and... Mummy's, mummy's feelings are mummy's responsibility. Mummy's going to go do something that helps me calm myself down. Thank you very much. And it teaches them, here's where the thing about hold space, which I know a lot of people are like, what does hold space mean? Here's the thing about holding space. And it just means that we allow other people to be in a different emotional or physical space to it. So we can... You know, you could say, I'm, I'm feeling really happy today and you're feeling really sad. I don't need to be sad because you are. I can support you, but I don't need to take on your feelings. And you can, and again, like I just said, you can teach your children. Mummy's feeling upset right now. It's not because of you. Mummy's, it's mummy's job to look after mummy's feelings. And then, uh, and then show them, I'm going to go and regulate my feelings in this way. Bonuses. Your kids will start doing that. Mum will actually say now, Mummy, I'm I'm really annoyed with such and such because you know my brother's been doing this and I'm really tired. Can I go sit in the tent? We have this little tent. Can I go sit in the tent for a little bit and have some alone time? Alone time started by the way when we were in quarantine coming into Vietnam for two weeks. <laughs> we basically used to take it in turns to hide in the shower pod. Do you know what though? Isn't that much more adaptive? <laughs> to do Lego in the shower pod because everyone's frustrating you and you haven't slept for four nights. It's much more adaptive than exploding and throwing stuff at each other's heads. So you model it, your children will break the cycle and it's, you have this power. There are conscious parents up and down, well, all over the world who are breaking the cycle. So I put it to you before I finish, I put it to you that one, you deserve to feel good. Two, your blueprint for behavior and how you behave in any given situation, which is the same or similar to what you experienced in childhood, is set by age seven. Would you trust a seven year old, particularly those of you who have seven year olds or have had a seven year old, would you trust a seven year old to make your life decisions for you? No, <laughs> just no. You don't have to now. You don't have to be ruled by that. You can break the pattern within you because it is a pattern. It is not set in stone. If you have had this pattern for 30, 40, 50 years, it's going to be harder to break, of course. All you need is your awareness and some quiet space and bravery. I know it's simple but not easy. Awareness. Oh, doing it again. Okay. I'm going to be brave and I'm just going to say, look, I'm really sorry. I don't really feel like I could do anything until I've eaten something because I didn't eat breakfast today. Just give me 10 minutes. People respect it. And do you know, if they don't respect it, if you say, I'm really sorry, I can't bake 12 cakes for the cake sale. I just can't, I have so much on and I'm feeling really stressed out myself and my children need me right now at home and I just, I need to prioritise sleep over making cakes. I hope you understand. If you behave in this adaptive, supportive, respectful way and you express your needs respectfully and the other person says, that's not good enough for me and they don't like you anymore, then here's where you think, 
is that person somebody I want to keep in my life? You know, if your boundaries of saying no or saying, thank you, can I do that later? If people are responding in an angry way to that, th this is the gold being in the goo. Y you need to sit. Like I said, quiet space is so important for us. And think, is this somebody who supports my life and my goals? You know, no, you don't need to be like, okay, I'm never talking to them again. But maybe you do need to have boundaries in place with them. And you also need to, as you, you will find your authentic self through doing these practices, you realise that actually your self-worth isn't tied up in everybody's opinion of you. And that if you say no to something that you genuinely can't cope with and you say it clearly and calmly with your, you know, your rationale, you don't even need to, you just say no. <laughs> you want no is a complete sentence. But if you, if you know, if you're saying, I'm sorry, no, I can't take this on right now. It's just too much. And I think it would negatively affect m my, my emotions and my energy right now. And I can't manage it. If the other person is telling you that's not good enough for them, by the way, like 99% of people will go, good on you. Ah, oh, I need to take a leaf out of your book. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. But if there are people who don't like it when you put in boundaries, maybe they're not the people for you. Harsh, but true. Wow. <laughs> a lot of information. Hopefully, um, you've learned a lot. And hopefully you will be able to find a quiet space after this at some point. Or, you, you know, you can watch it again. It's, I will be putting it on YouTube. And the links to the YouTube video are in my bio uh, on Instagram and on Facebook and on LinkedIn. So you can watch it anytime. This kind of stuff takes a long time to digest. I mean, PhDs are written on codependency. It is huge it is wide reaching and it is powerful to break maladaptive codependent patterns of behavior and relationships please take away that if you're resonating with any of this and thinking oh good god that's me it's a pattern you can break it now you know how good luck <laughs> please share with me uh what, what you thought and what you learned and please 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 share with me your takeaways because you know, this is why I do it and and everybody needs to know about this. Congratulations for making it to the end and good luck. You can do it. Bye.